Okay, so this happens from time to time, and it's not common, but it can happen. Some of our banner boxes need repaired because the vinyl, and in this particular case, the Velcro actually became unattached from the vinyl that goes into the box, and the spring and everything just unwound completely. So the customer sent this back to me so that I could repair it and I thought it would be a great opportunity to be able to show you how to repair one of these. Now in this particular case it came back a little bit crinkled and things like that so I'll take a heat gun to that, smooth that out, we'll, re we'll re velcro it but it also has some sticky stuff on here as well and I'm just going to use some cleaner with that, and this cleaner, by the way, this particular cleaner works on this print so as to not take off the actual image, okay? So anyhow, it's just where the, the Velcro tape got against it and gooed it up. And that could have even been what actually prevented it from going down right in the first place. Maybe, maybe the attachment got off a little bit and the sticky stuff got on there and just caused a jam up. So, uh, you'd have to see what I mean in order to understand what I'm talking about. But in the meantime, I'm just going to clean this up and I'll be right back with you on how to repair a banner box and respring it. Be right back. Okay, so we're back and what I've done up to this point is I've cleaned that sticky, tacky stuff off the front and off of the back as well. And in addition to that, I also took the heat gun and just heated that up and pulled that crease out. It's pretty forgiving. So just clean that up a little bit. So let's do this. Let's actually get started with the banner box. In the meantime, we're going to take our vinyl graphic and just set it to the side. Now I do want to point out that a reason sometimes this could happen where this uh, vinyl becomes unattached from your box could be in the setup process. And what that means is is maybe instead of putting the pole up and letting the vinyl ride on top and then you put the pole up as it's attached, I'd have to show you what I mean, but once it's attached, sometimes what guys will do is they'll take their pole and they'll just set it aside and then they'll pull their banner way up high and then they'll take their pole and put it in and put it into the stand. It's the wrong way to do it. And, and the reason it's the wrong way is because your vinyl can go too high and overextend. And then all of a sudden, the, vi or the Velcro catches on this lip of the box. And when it does that, it can't go down in properly. So it has only one choice, and that is to detach from the Velcro. And in which case, when it does, you're going to hear the spring go zzzz. It's, it's like a roller blind that's out of control. That's exactly what it comes down to. So I just wanted to cover that really quick so you know the proper setup is to put your... Put your your actual telescopic pole in the back first, once the feet are out and all that good stuff, right? And then begin to pull up your banner, set it on the pole, and then extend your pole, not the other way around. And that way you can't go any higher than it can actually go. All right? So let's do this. We're going to set the banner, the vinyl banner to the side for a second. You're going to need some tools for this project, okay? I already started this uh, before I decided to do the video, so I'm a couple screws ahead. But basically what you're going to have on your box, let me come out to you here so you can actually see. On the box, you're going to have a flat side of your blind, and on the other side, you're going to have a round nub. I hope you can see that. So a round nub on one side, and a flat on the other. And the side of the box that we're going to open up is actually the nub side. So let's get started on that. I already am a step ahead. I took some screws out, as I mentioned, to make life a little easier so it supports itself. I'm going to put the legs out just like that. Okay? And because we know the spring's pretty much already unwound anyway, I and mean, there's no tension, I'm not scared of it getting away from me and hurting me. But if there's still tension on this, you want to be very careful because you'll see what I mean. If you take all the screws out and there's still tension, 
this plate can get away from you, and it can kick up, it can kick you in the face, it can do anything, and there's a lot of pressure behind this, okay, if it still has spring action to it. So you want to be careful. If you're not sure, here's my suggestion, and we're going to cover it the right way, okay? So our nub side, our flat side. I'm going to take a small pair of vice grips, and all I'm going to simply do is hold this side. It doesn't have to be real tight, it just has to hold it, okay? So, what that's going to do is it's going to prevent the whole thing from shooting out, that if I take this screw off, which we're going to, and when I take this off, we wanna, we'll be able to feel if there's tension. So we want to hold on to this pretty tight and make sure that it is okay to let loose. And I'm pretty confident it has no tension to it, but just for safety practice, I'm going to show you how to do it. So, I have all the screws out. You're going to have four screws in each corner, all right? You set those to the side, and if it does have tension, here again, it's going to try to spring. But I can feel, obviously, there is no tension on this whatsoever. So, all the spring left out completely of the box. The box isn't ruined. It just needs to be re-sprung. Okay, so here's the part I really want you to be cautious about because if the spring has tension, as I mentioned, it is dangerous. So if you feel like it has a little bit of spring to it, what I want you to do is put the vice grips on that and you are going to let it unwind with the vice grips little by little while holding it tightly in your hand. So you don't want to let it slip because here again, you'll get that and it can be very dangerous at that point. So you want to be extremely cautious and careful as to not hurt yourself. And I would not want that to happen to you. So make sure that if you feel like there's a little bit of spring there, when you take that plate off, just simply put the vice grips on it and let it unwind one revolution at a time and very slowly. Be careful, don't rush it. Another reason I'm doing this video is I've had so many requests over the years of, you know what, the tension is actually getting looser as I do more shows. So this is another way that isn't just to fix your vinyl and putting it back, but it's also to help you if you need to respring this, you'll know exactly how to do it. So there is no tension. So what we're gonna do, we need to figure out what's going on here because I think in this case, uh, the gentleman that I'm doing this for, I think his vinyl is pretty much, everything is just a gooked up mess in here. And I mean, this is a bad one. <laughs> so, uh, it has, I, I don't even know if I can get this thing out, to be honest with you. There is so much adhesive just binding this whole thing up at this point. But this whole thing has to come out. So let's see if we can do this. And of course, we're going to do it right on camera. I might have to struggle with this a little bit because here again, it is really, really stuck here. So the more I twist, the more I twist, I don't know, are we getting anywhere with it? I don't think so. It's really stuck. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back because apparently this is going to give me a workout. But I'm going to show you how to do it right. It's still feasible. So as I cut away and come back, I didn't do anything other than just trying to slip this out of here. And I can't because it has so much adhesive that's actually holding the interior of the box. So this is a bad one, but we're going to fix it. Be right back. Okay, so we are back. It only took me a couple minutes to get this, but uh, it's because <laughs> you can see it's just one heck of a mess here where the Velcro literally just bound clear up into this thing. I mean, this is... I've never seen one quite this bad. Don't know what happened. No judgment at all for my client. Uh, and you'll see his banner, so please. <laughs> it's nothing that he did wrong necessarily, so I'm not attacking him at all. This is something that shouldn't happen, but sometimes here again, it does happen because of the setup and things like that. So I want to educate you on that. Uh, let's do it the right way. So I, I, lost, my, I lost part of my... Uh, end here, you can see that on these particular banners, it's just a spool and you have your knob end. We'll just put that back in, okay? And then there's a spring. So I've got to go again because what we have is even more adhesive just all over the place. So I'm going to be scrubbing this up for a little while 
and we'll be back once again. But I do have it out of the box, as you can see, and we'll go from there. Okay, let me catch up to speed with where we're at here, okay? So, here's what we've done so far. This was just a crinkled mess. It's called the leader sheet of your banner, okay? It's called a leader, okay? And normally it would have adhesive tape on it. We'll, we'll put that on here later, okay? But what I've done is I've taken and I measured from the end and I came in six inches on each side and I just cut a new line right across. So as long as you have somewhat of a leader, you're okay. So even with six inches extra on there with a foot, we really don't need that much. So now what we're going to do is we're taking our flat end, and by the way, I'm wearing gloves now because in the midst of this, uh, I didn't have any sweat or tears, but I definitely had bloodshed. And so you do want to be careful as you're repairing these boxes that you don't cut yourself, which I did. So instead of dealing with band-aids and all that stuff, I'll just put a pair of gloves on and that will be that. So we're just going to simply set this in here, okay, with our lead coming out of it. And this could be a little tricky to get this back in. You can use the aid of your your lead sheet. So what I like to do is I like to take the little pair of vice grips and here again just put on the end of this and what this is going to do here again it's going to keep it from pushing out. Okay, So that's really important. So this is the other thing that we need to do in order to wind this. On the very bottom of our boxes you're going to find a little pin, okay? And this little pin is kind of crucial. And I'm going to back up because Billy messed up. I don't do enough of these, <laughs> so I actually took the wrong end off. We want to take the flat end off, not this end, and we'll get back to this pin. You'll see why. So I will put that first, and we'll talk about that, but you actually basically want the flat end to work with. That's what we're going to do. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Wrong end. Here again, I don't refab enough of these or recondition enough of these to remember. So I apologize. I'll make that note though. So we're back. We have the flat end of our banner box off. And we have this little key that is underneath that I showed you. And there's also just a tiny hole here right at the end. And we are going to slip this in here once we find out exactly where it needs to be positioned. There's a little hole. In fact, let me take let me take these vice grips off just for now so we can make it easier. And I'm going to turn the end and I'm pushing in at the same time. And I want to find out where that hole is. It's there somewhere. I know that. And we're kind of cutting ourselves a little short here on our lead, but that's okay. We still have enough lead. So basically what this key that I put in there is going to do is it's going to prevent the thing from unraveling as we're trying to readjust the spring. Okay, so here again, I'm going to take my vice grips. I'm going to put them back on the knob end. That will keep that from turning. Okay, so we do that. And now we're ready to reposition ourselves. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and line up our flat piece. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to wind this end 30 times. But to be safe, I also have another pair of vice grips. Now, don't worry. I have some extra tools here, too. I just have a bigger set of vice grips. But if you don't have vice grips, no worries. 
you can still do this. It's just going to be a little easier with vice grips because you don't have to hold it uh, near as tight. So, but you could use needle nose pliers or electrical pliers, or if you just have regular pliers, you can use those as well. Here again, I'm going to position myself so that I'm using the bigger vice grips, okay? So let's do that. Put these on the end. And here again, this is just going to keep everything from slipping, okay? And we want to turn this clockwise. So if you are standing at the end, we want to turn it clockwise 30 revolutions. So you're going to want to count as you go. So here we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 29, and 30. And when you get to this point, now you just have to get everything lined up. Make sure that your actual plate at the end is lined up correctly. And of course, I can't do this with gloves on, so I have to do that, and I apologize. But what we're going to do is we're just going to start, and I know it's hard to see, I apologize. So you want to make sure you definitely get everything lined up as far as the threads of the box. So I've got to come up a little higher so I can see what I'm doing. And once you get the first one in, the rest will be a little easier, I promise. And it would be great if you had somebody at the other end kind of holding everything in place. But sometimes that's not feasible. And then sometimes you just got to work solo and do it. So, that being said, <laughs> let's at least get that started. It's at least started in the threads. So we're going to do the same thing over here. Let's get one more in, and that'll keep it from spinning backwards on us, okay? And now we're good. Now we can actually take these vice grips completely off, set them to the side, and go ahead and tighten them. You want to tighten the whole way, you just want to kind of get close until you get everything lined up. And here again, I'm just going back around, retightening everything. I know you can't really see this on the camera, but we want to make sure those things are tight. We don't want our banner box to fall apart on us, for sure. Okay? So, very important. And here's what I suggest. Take and put, before you put those back in the threads, those screws in the threads, take a little bit of Loctite, red Loctite, and put on the screw. And that'll help during travel. It'll keep them from bouncing back out during travel. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put pop rivets in these as well, just because I don't want those screws to back out. So for mine, I usually use pop rivets and it's a little bit more uh, convenient. The only way it's inconvenient is if you have to rewind this, you have to literally drill the pop rivets out. But, so anyhow, so we have our lead. Now, if I were to take this out right now, we have all that spring tension on there from 30 revolutions that we've done, and that would be bad. <laughs> we would have to start from scratch and start over again. But when I pull this out, in fact, Let's do that. I'm going to hold on to this lead sheet really tight, okay? And if I pull this, I can feel that we have lots and lots of tension on there already. Okay, so now what we're going to do with this, since we have our lead and we know we have our tension, okay, uh, I'm going to re-adhere the vinyl. And you'll see what that looks like in just a moment. Before I do anything else on this, since I had my grubby, greasy hands all over this lead, I'm going to take some 70% or 90-some percent rubbing alcohol, and I'm just going to clean that lead sheet off and let it dry really good before I put any adhesive on there. You want to make sure you do that as well. And the same thing with our vinyl banner, where we're going to put any adhesive. We want to make sure that it is nice and clean because those gre the grease from your fingers can affect that and pull it back up. So you want to be sensitive to that should you need to do that part as well. In the meantime, 
I'll be right back after we get the adhesive on it. Okay, so at this stage, I have my vinyl attached to the leader sheet, okay? I still have my pin in here, which is holding my spring. So what I want to do to make sure that nothing slips is I'm just going to hold a little bit of tension from behind and kind of pick up on it, okay? And we're going to let this feed in gradually, little by little. So the first thing you do is just take your pin, remove it, and you should feel automatically right now that you have lots of tension on this particular band. So I'm just going to let it kind of unwind and do its thing. So plenty of tension on there at this point with 30 revolutions to the spring on the box itself. Okay? And the way this particular client had this rack to send it back to me, you're going to probably, as I put it up, you're going to see creases and things like that. That'll come out over time, or I will take the heat gun over that and just try to get some of those blemishes out. It should never be stored that way if it's not rolled in the box, or if you have to send it back to somebody, make sure you put it in like a, a tube so that it's not creased against itself. Here again, nothing against this client. You don't know what you don't know, and uh, we go from there. And then, very important, also make sure that you put your little key that you have back in its holder on the bottom should you ever need it again. And if by chance you lose that key, you can use an eight penny finishing nail, uh, longer, like a three inch nail, to put in there. Here again, it's just a matter of finding that hole. So there we go, we're back. And we have, you can see we have plenty, plenty of spring in this action. So I'll be back and uh, I'll show you it once it is set up with the limited space that I have right here. And I'll be right back. All right, so here we go. We have our banner box. We have our uh, adjustable stick here. Our adjustable stick. We have our adjustable pole, okay? And I don't want to assume that anybody just knows how to set these up because apparently it can be done wrong. So turn your feet out. You want your feet out. That kind of helps, kind of helps keep things stable, okay? So the one thing you don't want to do is pull this up completely first because here again, as I mentioned earlier, you can go past the point of no return. So the easiest thing to do that I find is to take your pole, loosen the threads on the pole, okay, so that you have free range on this section as well as this section, okay? And what I do, that's the way I've always started, and I think it's the better route. Go ahead and fix that pole where it needs to go and let me readjust the camera so we're in this position at this point I'm just going to take and go ahead and attach the first part of this okay and now my tops attached now I'm going to take my very top section and I will pull that up the whole way and I'll go ahead and tighten the knob on the back and then I can go to my next phase. And as I do, that's as far as it'll go. I don't have all of it on camera, but you can see that if I needed to, I could just keep pulling this and pulling it. And that's a problem. Here again, if you have the Velcro on there, it can get wedged right here on this lip. So you want to be careful of that. You don't want to let this thing slide down real fast either when you are returning it to the position that it needs to be returned to. Be careful in the front of that, okay? So don't rush it. Just, if it gets caught on there, just pull this out a little bit in the front, okay? And your Velcro will go right back in, okay? Simple as that. So just, again, return process. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my top piece. I'll go ahead and lower the top piece. Then I will adjust and lower the next section. And right back into the box, and we're done. And that is how not only you set up a banner box, but how you respring it. I hope you found this video to be very helpful. Please stay tuned on other videos on the Branding for Entertainers uh, YouTube page because there is some valuable information there that you can get. So if you like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, list those too, and I'll be happy to answer you personally. Take care.